Hello and welcome to season three of Meet the Drapers, Brand Accelerator. Every week, three entrepreneurs pitch their startups to the Drapers and a VIP guest judge. Every episode, the judges declare a winner to move on to the semifinals. And the winner is... But here's the twist. You, the viewer, can invest in any and all of these startups. Like a company? Go to meetthedrapers.com and invest in their live crowdfunding campaign. And you can bring them back for the season finale. The crowd is voting in three of our finalists. This is your shot to invest like a venture capitalist. Now, let's make some money. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. This is the big semifinals. This is the first of the three semifinals. All right. We're going to see three that we've had before in the show and they were winners from previous episodes. I'm Tim Draper, and I have with me my father, Bill Draper, my sister, Polly Draper, and we have a special guest today. It's Neville Taraparwala, and Neville is the, the president of Brand Capital and the Times of India Group, and we're so excited to have you here with us, Neville. All right, so Brand Capital really is the strategic investment arm of the Times of India Group in India. We've done about 900 investments. Uh, our objective is really to help the early stage companies, the entrepreneurs ecosystem, to basically thrive and grow over a period of time. And if we can help them in this whole journey of building their brand, we believe there's huge value created for these companies. So that's what Brand Capital is focused. Uh, as far as our operations in the United States is concerned, is really looking at new ideas, uh, new opportunities, new companies, which are looking at Asia as a market, predominantly India. And uh, our objective is to look at those companies and help them sort of, you know, land in India successfully. Because, it, you know, from here, India looks a little opaque, but when we come in as the largest media conglomerate, we can help these companies to land more successfully than otherwise on their own. So that's the role that we play and help the ecosystem. So in addition to having uh, funding possibilities from us, the Drapers, and the crowdfund, which is you, the, the viewing audience, and you can, you can invest in all these companies you know through our, our program, go to meetthedrapers.com, click through, Republic will help you uh, get on board and you can, uh, and you can invest $100, $1,000, $10,000, and, uh, and we think that we have a way of sort of accelerating them, accelerating their brand. With that, how about you two? What do you think accelerates entrepreneurship? Dad, you wrote a book, The Startup Game. I'm glad uh, you talked about that. Yeah, um, this is everybody uh, should The read Startup it. Game by William H. Draper. I think everybody should read it. It's available in bookstores and on Amazon. Well, the essence of it is on the part of the entrepreneur. Energy, intelligence, focus, the capability of building a good team. Mostly, that entrepreneur has got to be tough-minded, willing to crash through that barrier that keeps most weaker entrepreneurs from, uh, from attaining major success. And I'm gonna promote my book, too, here. Uh, How to Be the Startup Hero. You see, the generations haven't changed too much. The startup game to the startup hero. Um, check it out. This, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, it is a tough, tough, long, tough battle. And so I want to make sure that you are battle-hardened, and that's what my book is all about. Battle-hardening the entrepreneur, making sure that it is, that that entrepreneur is ready. With that, one at a time, we are going to bring on our three semifinalists, and we're going to give them the really rough questions to get them to see whether they end up being in the final. And so what I decided to do was take the expertise that I had built over the four years of running the Venture Fund and take kind of my need and my desire that I had as a person to meet people that live all over the world and combine the two to create a platform where anyone in the world can host a virtual event. We're definitely a venture backable bet. So it's a company that has potential to explode overnight. Um, whereas the other companies were a little more traditional businesses. It's Tio. Whoa. Nice. 
Uh, so I just really want to focus in on the product visuals. It's still too early for us to focus in on the metrics and the numbers. So I want to kind of convey the vision visually now. So I'll give a demo and then uh, open it up to questions about the product. So Don Stein, you are back. And you're back with your business, T.O., and you're in the semifinals. This is a big deal. Thank you. So we're, are, we're gonna ask you the tough questions. Yeah. Why should you move on to the finals? Cool. So I really appreciate you all voting for me and moving me to the next round. And thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Um, so this product is very, very futuristic and a little crazy. And so instead of just telling you about it, I wanted to come today prepared with a visual. And so what this is that we'll actually be watching is the actual teleportation or time travel back to the event that Tim and I did last week, um, which was a Draper University alumni reunion. Mm -hmm. And because it's virtual, everything is captured and you're able to go back and attend an event that's already happened. So this is the full audience of everyone that came to see Tim on stage. And we'll just play a quick few clips Looking and then I'll good, come back yeah. in there. Yeah. I, I, I remember uh, uh, being in a black theater, a dark, I think it's called a black theater, where- Black box. Uh, black box theater. Yeah. You are on stage and all the lights are on you. So that's Tim talking about what makes a good pitch. And the audience loved that, as you can see. And here's the audience starting to ask yeah, questions to when Tim. I was talking to uh, Bancor the first time, we were bringing a personality. It doesn't really matter who's on your board. You didn't have other people ask questions, which yeah, so would have been helpful. One of the coolest things that we do versus a traditional webinar is that the audience, so all of these people that are out here, are actually able to engage. Um, talk to each other in mini conversations. So you can literally turn to the person to your right and say, that was hysterical. Or uh, you can directly engage with Tim. So now that you've kind of seen some of the visuals, would love to open up the floor for some more questions. We were mostly concerned about the business model because the business model seems as though you're counting on people only being willing to pay for more better facial yeah. skins and, and that kind of thing so that you can um, you can look differently as an avatar. Maybe short term what's the business model, long term what's the business model. How do you get that business to a place where it is con continuing to, to be self-sustained? So I, I foresee three revenue streams. Um, the first one is selling virtual tickets. So that one I think is self-explanatory, but there's only 100 seats in this venue, so the price actually can go up with demand and supply according to the value of the entrepreneur or whoever's talking. Um, selling the subscription to the community. So for example, Startup Grind, as we've mentioned, is one of the communities that's hosted an event with us and wants to now do a monthly event. So they would pay us a monthly fee. Not only are they just getting the ability to do this one event per month, but we also have a chat platform. Um, that's something that's very interesting for communities that otherwise don't have a great way to keep their community members connected. So- Can't Startup Grind just do it for free? You're, you're making it for free for everybody, right? Um, so they can do the first two <laughs> events for free, and then from there, you pay us $19.99 a month in order to have one event per month, Okay. and it goes up from there. Um, the other thing is virtual goods. I do think there's a very interesting enterprise play here. The issue, and this is kind of the short-term roadblock that we're facing, um, our venues are limited to 100 to 200 people. And so when I've talked to enterprise, we've had people ask us for 10,000 person conferences, 17,000 person conferences. We can't support that yet. So although there is clear interest from the enterprise to pay us these fees, we've already lost some contracts. Um, there's some customer proposals, unfortunately, because we haven't been able to satisfy. Yeah, I just wanted to check. Do you have a robust execution plan? I, I like the idea. I see what you're trying to yeah. say. It's futuristic, teleporting people and getting it done. But it requires a strong execution yeah. plan and a strong adoption of TO. So I've, I've taken a thesis-driven approach okay. throughout basically since even before we started the company. So um, I have my list of thesis that I'm continuously adding to and crossing off whether they're true or untrue. The thing that has been most interesting is that we've now, over the last two weeks, had five public events. They've been organized by somebody else. All of those organizers have asked or scheduled to do their next event. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get to 150 organizers the reason why I think that's important is because it gets it equates 
to about 10,000 monthly active users. If you think about 150 organizers hosting one monthly event at about 50 to 100 people attending each month. The only way we become a massive company where we take off in hockey stick is if we can catch one, network effects, and two, this entire platform is self-serve so that we don't need to do any of this, the actual sales or hands-on sales. I believe with a sample set of 150 organizers, that's enough data and enough friendly conversations where we'll be able to get our platform to where it's fully self-serve. That is how meetup.com took off. That's how Eventbrite took off. So we're banking on that network effect. Okay, you've got a crowdfunding opportunity here. You have an investment opportunity here. What are you gonna do with that money? Why should the viewers yeah. back you in the crowdfund? I've always tried to take the approach of you bet on the person. And this is something I've dedicated my last five years to. Not in this exact vehicle, but I've been doing VR every single day of my life for the last five years since I graduated. Um, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. I've seen thousands of companies over the last three or four years, and I feel like I understand where are the pockets of opportunity. This is clearly a new industry, and it's something that's futuristic, and so there is a chance that you lose principal, but there's also a chance that we can catch a hockey stick, and the small percentage of your net worth you invest into this can become a larger percentage of your net worth. Terrific. Well, thanks Thank for you. being on Meet the Drapers yet again. Thank you. <laughs> right. Appreciate it. All right, and congratulations. Yes, sir. In semifinals, I think I hear back in a few days about the finals. Um, but more importantly than that, like I got to get back to building the company. So I fly to London tonight and then get back with the team. If we get chosen to move on, I mean, I think it would be amazing. And if we don't get chosen to move on, I'm sure it would be a blessing in disguise. But neither one's going to really stop us. So I think just the key is just like staying focused and as long as the team and myself are all working coherently together then this will become a successful company at some point so what did you all think neville this was your first exposure to tia what did what did you think i think it's a it's a good futuristic idea i believe uh, there are opportunities that i can see that this can work i think the two challenges what he's going to face is really about the adoption part. You know, uh, how fast can he get the enterprises, which is what he said, I'm going to, you know, sort of focus on a enterprise opportunity. How are they going to adopt that? So all the small conferences, the educational ins institutions, and probably he, you know, he may be successful there. So if he gets his execution right, I think it's a good futuristic opportunity. At the beginning, I was a little thinking his business model isn't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when an entrepreneur gets started on something, they've got to be innovative on, their, on what they're providing, the service or product they're providing, but they've also got to be really creative on what their business model is going to be. I think he's so passionate about getting VR out there that he isn't stopping to think, hey, maybe there's... This is an entirely new platform. I, maybe there's some new way to uh, get money out of customers because I was thinking, yeah, you can put skins on it and you can pay extra for the skins and yeah, maybe you can do something with the conferences. But is there some way you can just grab them and hold them and where they, they're paying and they don't even know they're paying, they're so happy that they're using it. Uh, I don't think he has that yet. Has yet. Uh, although, having done, having experienced it, it was, it was really novel. It felt interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt like something where I could speak from the podium, but then I could go sit at a table and speak with the people at that table. It was a, a really powerful thing. I really did like his answer when I said, okay, now talk to the viewer and see whether they want to crowdfund you. Right. Um, he really came through there. Uh, so in his heart, he's got the right heart for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I think he's got a he's got a, a lot of work to do on business modeling. But uh, otherwise, I thought, uh, you know, good. Okay. Well, now we are going to see three semifinalists today, and you've just seen one. And so let's bring on the next semifinalists. But before we do, 
Let's see what's going on behind the scenes. So I'm Marco, the CEO of Sunu. And I'm Fernando, the CTO. And we built a smartwatch for visually impaired people that uses sonar, haptic feedback, and GPS navigation to help them move around safely and freely. We were selected to pass to the semi-finals. That was a great news. We were super nervous at that moment. Uh, when, when we were waiting, waiting for the response, I was looking to see every, uh, every one of the judges. And when I look at Bill, uh, he blinked an eye. And I was like, oh, <laughs> is that a message? But still, uh, that, that didn't mean anything until the uh, team told us that we passed the next round. And that was super exciting. I think we hugged each other, right? Yeah. And the winner is Sunu. Congratulations, <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you all, thank you all. For We're building on some of the feedback that we received yesterday uh, from the Drapers. Uh, just trying, trying to, trying to uh, build off of that, strengthen our points around those, um, the, the, that feedback that we received, and then just uh, getting ready to, 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 to go on the show. So let's bring on our next contestant, Sunu, Marco, Fernando, welcome back to the show. Good to have you here, and uh, and we're very excited about what you're doing. Tell us though, why? I mean, you clearly cleared the cleared the path for yourselves. Now you're in the semifinals. What is it that's going to make you you guys glow so much that you should be a finalist at, at Meet the Drapers? So to start with, uh, the world needs a company like you. Someone that can be a champion for people with disabilities that is at the forefront of developing technologies that can empower individuals who are vulnerable or who are living in unfair situations. And you can tell that just by looking at our product. It's not a commodity product. It's actually a product that is changing lives, that is empowering the user to be more independent and more included in society. In our previous episode, we mentioned that the Sunu band is a complement to the Y cane and the guide dog, and yet doesn't replace these important travel aids. And there's a reason for this. Early on in our developments, we learned that this white cane is a standard in orientation mobility training. That's the process by which we develop the essential skills to travel independently. But the white cane has also become the symbol of independence within the blindness community and serves to protect blind and low vision pedestrians. That is why it's painted white with a red stripe. And through our work with users and leaders in the community, we've learned the limits of these aids, the white cane and the guide dog. And that is why we're committed to developing innovations that are much more than commodity products, but life-changing tools to bring impact to the users, the family, and the caregivers, those rehabilitation specialists. You know, my biggest concern <laughs> is uh, that you haven't really put that much thought into the pricing and the value. This is incredible value. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you're pricing it based on sort of an 80% margin, and, um, and I, I got that That's feeling. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I got the feeling though that um, once it's on somebody's wrist, you're not thinking in terms of an ongoing relationship with that customer. You're thinking, I make the sale, it's on their wrist, it's done. I think a sharp business mind would say, we want an ongoing relationship with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so give me how you're gonna build that relationship with a customer. Mm -hmm. So for, for the pricing perspective, we, at the, first, the first thing we wanted to make sure is that the, the product is affordable, at least for the market we were targeting initially. Um, then, uh, as we scale, uh, first we started selling B2C uh, through our online store, so that's why it was very important for us to be an affordable product. Then we started B2B by using uh, assistive technologies, uh, specialized retailers, or uh, institutions for the blind. Now we are getting into subsidies, which is is, is broaden more uh, our, our target uh, as we grow. We want more use so we can get more data and later on uh, we can put a subscription on it, but that's definitely on the plan. So if you've handed it to them yeah. and all the real value is already there, adding a subscription, you're gonna have to create another service or product. If it's already a subscription service, then you have them regularly paying. I think, you're, I mean, you are an engineer, you have created an ama amazing product, but you really should think through the business model in much greater depth, I believe, than you have. See, I, I have exactly the opposite idea. I think 
The U.S. is a huge market for what you've got. And the product is really superb, I gather. My, my feeling is, God, this market is huge in the U.S. You are spreading yourself too thin. I, I worry that you, 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 you're just kind of going off in all these countries and uh, I would have a, a very different point of view. I'd have, let's get it right here because we've got a great product, big margin, and a huge, am I right? You, you don't talk about the market, by the way, how big the blind market is, but how big is it? Yeah, it's uh, close to 300 million people. 300 million in the world? Or in the world. I think it's easier to go global now. You can go global. Yeah, they just ship it off. They don't. You don't have to support them. You don't have to be there. Correct. Correct. Uh, I am a little worried, though, about getting on some Telefonica, you know, route where you're just going off on some. That's a little bit your MIT engineer <laughs> kind of saying, "Hey, this is a nice, fun thing to go after," as opposed to the business person who says, "I'm just going to focus on this." I, I think. Be careful with people taking you off in other directions. Okay. I think. Okay, I want you to finish by talking to the viewers right. and your viewing audience. I want you to tell them why they should be backing you and where that money's going to go, what you're going to be able to do with it. The reason why you should pick Sunu is because, first of all, we're obsessed with this problem. Uh, Fernando has a lifetime experience this problem himself. I decided to get into this uh, marketing to this problem since, since, since I was a kid. So by choosing Sunu, you're choosing something more than, something much bigger than another uh, high-tech startup. You are choosing uh, and supporting a movement that shows that the best of human technology and best of human intellect can be used to, to solve the most vulnerable parts of ourselves. The use of this money is going to be to scale uh, current product, uh, getting more partners over the world, getting to more subsidies, uh, scale manufacturing capabilities, and also it's going to accelerate the development uh, of a future product. Terrific. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for Good once job. again being on Meet the Drapers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Great to see you. Thank Good you job. so much. It was different. <laughs> it was different because I think last time. We ended, we ended uh, the pitch before they started to ask questions and this was more of a conversation so they actually addressed some questions before we finished. It was really interesting to see their dynamic in terms of their point of views um, and then there were some very interesting uh, thoughts from, uh, from Bill as well and then yeah. Tim had some really, uh, really good feedback for us. We also wanted to, to get that point across that what we're building is not a commodity, uh, that is a life-changing uh, device, uh, and that, that, that is a roadmap of our, of our company. Terrific, so uh, what did we all think of Sunu? What, what, what's changed? What's your thinking? Dad? What? Yeah, my, my feeling is this is a superb team. I like both of them very much. Uh, they, but, but the, the essence of the product is so much in demand uh, because you can always, uh, you can, it, it extends beyond the blind community. I'm concerned that we've got two inventors and no business person there. Correct. But I think they can probably, they're really smart. They oh, can probably figure it out. I mean, they've got a great product, as I see. They've got a million dollars in sales. You know, I mean, that's and something. And they're so passionate about it. They're all looking, collecting data to try to make changes in exactly. it as they go, which means that you already have a, a long-term product. If it was wireless enabled yeah. and it was through a subscription, oh. they would know everybody who's walking around. It's, and where they are. And where they are. Oh, they'd know everything. They'd know oh. what the weather is. They'd know everything. That, that's the point, people. right? Tim They're is engineers. right that they need a business-focused person <laughs> on board to think of all these I things. I think so. You know, I think that's critical. Good. Okay, well, um, let's bring on the next contestant. And before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. 
Hello everyone, we are Sparkle Innovations. We are trying to make this world a better place with less plastic pollution, with more sustainable products while supporting circular economy. We are the first company in the world to use the combination of banana fiber, bamboo fiber and cornstarch to make a biodegradable, plastic-free and chemical-free sanitary pads. For being selected for the show and that means a lot to us and now being selected for semi-finalists, it is completely unexpected. <laughs> Sparkle! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing because we worked so hard to develop this product and uh, you know the customers, we know they're going to love it because uh, sustainability is the future and uh, uh, knowing today's generation, uh, I know they love to do their part to uh, when it comes to uh, uh, making this planet a plastic free planet. So I really hope they love it and I, I know they, live, they will love it. So welcome back. Well, we're going to hear again from Sparkle, another one of our semi-finalists. Sparkle, welcome back. Thank you. Now, please tell us why Sparkle should be in the finals and why the viewers right. should be funding your crowdfund. Sure. I would like to start with, we worked very hard to develop a product that we know our customers will love because we believe sustainability is the future, especially when you make sustainability affordable. So today's young generation, they, are, they absolutely love to do their best to make this planet a plastic-free planet. I would like to share my personal story that I had problem of rashes and uh, irritations while I was using conventional plastic pads. And when I shared this story with my friends, I was really surprised to know that they also had similar problems. And after that, I started looking for natural alternatives. Uh, but uh, the eco-friendly pads available in the market, they were very expensive. So with Sparkle, we aim to make natural pads affordable for everyone. So with our now that's, that's one of the points I really want to get at, and that is your pricing. It was a little fuzzy when I asked you about pricing before, and that's probably because you don't have your costs yet, right? Yeah. You haven't really figured out your costs? We have. I think you've got to nail those. I think you've got to make sure that you are, because if all the other ones that are biodegradable are too expensive, mm -hmm. it might be that yours have to be too expensive yeah. too. So uh, maybe there's something you're doing that makes it cheaper, but you know maybe not. Okay, I'll, I'll break it down. Okay. To cost. So uh, conventional pads available in the market, the plastic pads that uh, contain up to 90% plastic, they start at 15 cents per piece in the USA. In India, it's about 10 rupees per piece because we're targeting both the markets. It's about 10 rupees is, this, is the market. It is the market, yeah. And so what are you expecting to sell yours for? So we, are the, so we have two product range. So the first one is uh, with individual disposal bag and uh, a premium packaging such as this. So this uh, would go at 20 rupees per piece, which goes between 10 rupees and the eco-friendly pads that are being sold at 30 rupees per piece. If you sell it for 20 rupees, how much are you making them for? Uh, uh, our cost with uh, the packaging and the pad is uh, around 60% off, so we make 40% margin on each piece. And, and you're sure on those on those cost numbers? Uh, as or? realistic as we can get uh, <clears throat> from uh, the data we have so far. Okay. And this would actually be better because this is only at minimum production level. Mm -hmm. Once we ramp up the production, uh, these numbers will actually become better. So these are conservative measures that we have put right now. So Chirag and Hethal, yes. Yes. Uh, Thank you for being here. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, in terms of solving a problem. Yes, thank so you. So once you've got this in a stage where you're ready to market it, mm -hmm. all right, uh, obviously Sparkle seems to be a sparkling name. Yes. Thank you. So obviously you're going to try and build your brand. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to understand a little bit better in terms of what's the demographic specifically in India that you're targeting. Actually, just this month, as soon as we go back, is when we're going to have our D2C model ready for launch so people will be able to order it online. So with direct to consumer model, uh, uh, we're targeting 20 to 30s young, uh, especially millennials as well, because they are more aware, more eco-conscious. And in the metro cities, actually, uh, there are many startups that are focusing on eco-friendly products, uh, consumer goods and everything. So our first target would be eco-conscious uh, consumers in their 20s and 30s. Uh, to reach even more people in the offline retail space, we have actually outlined 50 offline stores in four metro cities. They uh, supply uh, uh, similar eco-friendly organic products. Yeah. So that is where actually customers go to see what new uh, alternatives they have available. There, we have to uh, uh, shrink a little margin because we have to give them 10%. But uh, just to get the brand out there, just to get the name out there, get some visibility, that is the second approach that we are also considering. Okay, somehow you made her the president 
What was the thinking there? You found it, you started it. Yeah. I started You it. made her the president. What were you thinking? I mean, she's very good with numbers. Uh, she's a chartered accountant. Yeah. I'm good with the machines, so she is good when it comes to operations. And uh, yeah. she she knows. I mean, she. Of, the of face course, of menstrual pads should be a woman, not a man. Right. Thank you <laughs> for, for say. saying it out. Right. Yeah. 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 And we, we 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 both believe in gender equality, right? So. Yeah. But this is an equality. This is inequality. You're yeah, saying the woman should run it because it's that. No, no. See, oh, yeah. First point exactly. is first point is because she's very good with numbers. I'm yes. good with words. Okay. Which is why I'm doing yeah. a lot of talk. Okay. <laughs> second I mean, yeah. second thing. Okay, you're now the president. You're the CEO of the business. Yeah. If it's not working out with him, what do you do? You fire him? Uh, I have an option. No. <laughs> but I oh, won't no. do this. No, no, I would never do this. Actually, Tim's question probably is that if ever yeah. you think that you have to fire him, yeah. would you as the CEO of the company ever fire him if you got someone else to do a better job? Or maybe he steps back. I think <laughs> that's the challenging question. I think you should answer I, that. I would never do that. Okay. And what about you? If, if somehow the board said, um, you're now the CEO, mm -hmm. would, would you be willing to take that role first? Answer that. Mm -hmm. Quick yes or no, would you be willing to take the role away from your wife? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're putting us in a position where we're not really prepared. But anyways, uh, if it's better for the company and if, if uh, she's okay with it, I, I would say yes. If she's okay with it. <laughs> yes. And what if you had to fire her? See, uh, at this point, we are focusing on both yes. our strengths. We're not thinking about the negative scenarios. Yes. We're focusing on what we're good at, and we're both passionate about what we do. Yes. So if we just focus on the negative, I don't think we would have even started the company. Yes. So, good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Good. good, okay, good. well, good to hear. Awesome. Uh, okay, you, you've got 10 seconds to look at that camera and tell the viewers why they should back you in crowdfunding. Sure. So with your support, we can help uh, more women reach their full potential at school. We can provide uh, biodegradable pads to a large number of women. We can help more farmers earn extra income. We can reduce plastic pollution, agro waste, and plastic pad waste. So please support us. Yes. Great. All right. Thank you. Great. Sparkle. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Terrific. Thank you. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. Good job. I think the pitch went well, but uh, uh, there were uh, many tricky questions. I mean, it's... Yes, uh, I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> One of the things we wanted to say that we want to be a company that focuses on growth as well as giving back. So that was a point that I could have emphasized more. So um, uh, that's just one thing I wanted to uh, to say as well. Oh, it's amazing. I hope we will come again for it. Yeah, like, I, I, think, I think we did well. We gave it our best shot. And uh, now it's up to the judges and, and the viewers. So um, I, I hope for the best. So what did everybody think of Sparkle? I think they really <laughs> showed some sparkle. Yeah. Uh, I, I, good team. Good uh, relationship they have. Uh, they've thought the product through, and uh, I think they're uh, they'd be a good bet. The key thing is that uh, it's a good team. I think they're solving a major pain point, uh, and that's why my question on demographics as to who they're going to target is going to be critical. And obviously, you know the price advantage that they have if they were to find a way to get to the U.S., which he seems to have thought through, because he said. If I have to do U.S., I wouldn't just import it. I would have a manufacturing plant. Yeah, overall, I thought I, I was, um, I liked them better the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't like watching him sort of squirm when I asked the question, well, what, would you fire her? It was like, no, we haven't prepared for this. <laughs> I mean, you're an entrepreneur. You got to be prepared for whatever but then, he, but then he came back with the best answer. He said, we don't... We don't, you know, think, we don't of think of the downside. We don't think of the negative yeah. things yeah. right I, now. I like or we answer. never, ever would have gotten into this that in the was first a place. Great was yeah. a great it was a good answer. answer. Yeah. Why, you know, why when we're so inspired together would we think of that maybe down the line when things are you know well that's the huge. point that's the point yeah, but then you then want them to start thinking about things like that because it isn't very far down the line when two entrepreneurs start hitting heads yeah, i think the biggest threat <coughs> threat if you if and I if would. they're married oh boy it's tough 
If I were to invest in this, I would worry most about the fact that I'm up against Tamp, whatever the other was. Tampon. Oh, yeah, or yeah. Code tax. And, uh, in America, and that would be other, your in America, best. In America, it would be tough, but in India, they probably have some brands that they're, yeah. I don't know the market. They sound like in India, that's the real dearth. Yeah. Like, there are a lot girls of women aren't don't going even to, use don't it. even yeah. going to school because they're embarrassed to leave the house. Cause that's right. Them. So, it sounds like it, it, in India is where it would really that's take fire. So, now we've got to choose who goes on to the finals. Now, the viewers, you viewers, you get to choose who goes on to the finals too. You, you're going to choose three, and we're going to choose three, and we're going to have finals with six of these uh, great entrepreneurs. I think that's about the number. We might make it five, we might make it seven, but uh, the viewers are going to be able to choose two. But we judges have the opportunity to choose at least three that go into the finals. Reminders what the three you know. So the three are Sunu, the solution for blindness, Tio, the virtual reality experience, and Sparkle. Uh, so uh, I'd like to hear from the judges which you liked and why, and then I'll lay out, I'll channel the crystal ball and we'll, we'll see <laughs> who, who we really want to go with. You, I, I would bet on Sunu. On uh, Sunu? Yes, on Sunu, the, the blind. I thought great team. They've got the product to the level that they can market it globally, just not the United States. They already have their website up. So they are ready to run. They've already got sales to the website. And uh, if they were to add that business element, a business executive, I think we're going to see and hear a lot about Sunu in that category. It's I going to have totally to agree. Yeah. That was Marco, uh, what's his name? Marco. And he Fernando. Was, and Fernando. Yeah. MIT. Uh, yeah. got, I mean, the talents there. It wasn't clear he went to MIT. He won the yeah, MIT award. Well, yeah. like, I always look at the time. The, the management first, right. and uh, he totally, uh, right. you know, I thought was the best of the group. Um, I loved them t the most, too. But I feel like, oh, I don't want to lose these, uh, the, the sparkle people either. It's like, I, I want to feel like maybe they could get into the finals, too, just because they're, it's, I doubt we're going to see anyone better than these two. Asunu, hands down, my fave. But Sparkle is such a great, it's such a great idea, such a great company. So, uh, here's my analysis. Uh, oh. Tio has extraordinary potential to spread throughout the world, where we're all going to be um, potentially accessible, connected, easy to find people of similar, similar interests or similar neighborhoods, um, all in a certain uh, place, and it can all be done virtually. And on the other hand, uh, you know, it's very new. Uh, I'm, I think I'm the only one who's ever done, a, <laughs> a prog done the program, and, uh, and it was a wonderful experience, and I'm not sure if, um, where it's gonna go. In Sparkle's case, I think uh, the husband-wife uh, thing is a, a risk, but it's also a big opportunity. On the other hand, uh, it's an enormous market. Women need these every month, and if you somehow transform women from using plastic to corn and bananas, uh, <laughs> you've, you've got a real major change. I believe there is a, a serious risk to their costs because I don't think they've really run the costs of what it really will take to manufacture these things. And so if they don't hit those cost numbers, then the price is going to be, have to be much higher and the market will shrink significantly. Sunu uh, is very unique technology, really interesting engineers working on it, and has great potential. It reminds me a lot of cruise automation. When I first got into the cruise automation car, we, we almost crashed, but I knew that that technology would just keep improving so that we'd be closer and closer to a self-driving car. This is, in effect, a self-driving car 
for you, for a blind person, it could really continue to evolve and improve and build spider sense for everybody out there who's blind and maybe even other markets. With them, I'm concerned about the, the business side. I, I think they don't give enough thought to it. They think as engineers, we know business, no big deal. I think they need to really understand business because that could be the difference between this being a $10 million business and a $10 billion business. So with that, let's go to the crystal ball, let's get the vibe and figure out who the big winner is. Crystal ball, crystal Ooh. ball. <laughs> is it Zunu, Tio, or Sparkle? I see sparkling, <laughs> I see Sunuing. <laughs> I see Tioing. <laughs> I believe. We have a winner! Sunu! <gasps> You're the winner! Yay! Go forward, become a part of our finalists, and win, and become extraordinary, and change all those lives, and let's get all those blind people to see again. And see you next week on Meet, Meet the, the Drapers. Drapers! Hey! So Neville, we would like you to become a part of the Draper family. Thank we you. adopt anyone who's a guest judge here, and thank you have thank really you so shown yourself thank you to so be much. a true Draper. Thank you so, so much. So thank you thank so you. much. Thank and you. I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to say. Thank you. Thank you. Draper is a lot easier to say than Tara Porawala. Correct. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the family. Great to have you. Is lost or unclaimed. It's still unclaimed. Right. Baker shock bureaucrats, too.